All right, so on this, when you're trying to find thin air, it's literally it. This is the simplistic way of doing it. You're going to have some big, huge fraction. On the top of this fraction, it's going to be an absolute value. The reason we do this is because your last number can be a little greater, a little less. It's literally what you're looking at. This is how I like to define it. The number you should get, or the approximate value, I'm going to say number should get. Then you will subtract from it number or value. These can be values either. You got. So in the last lab we did, you did law of conservation of mass. So ideally, law of conservation of mass exists, which means the mass of the products will be equal to the mass of reactants. So before your reaction took place, you got a mass of that whole system. That's what this is. That number you should get was the mass of before the reactants. That's the number you should get at the end. This number you got is the number after the reaction, you put it on the balance or on the scale, and you got the mass for it. <clears throat> you subtract those two out. So if before, this was, sorry, go ahead. Before and after. Before you. Yes. Okay. In that case, that's what you're looking at. Uh, can you like a this one? Not today. Did you then this whole quantity will be divided by the number you got. And then that quantity is times by 100 to give you the percentage. This is the important part, and this is why this up here is an absolute value. If the number I should, I should get, if it was 25 and the number I actually got was 25.2, it would be 25 minus 25.2. 0.2, which is negative 0.2. We don't care about that negative sign. You take absolute value of it. Okay? In this case, at this level, we're not caring about that. So in this, has anybody got questions about the center about besides that? I'll give you some practice problems for okay. Today, you guys are not yet ready for your quiz on Friday in mold conversion. And that's what we're working today. And we got to get something else out there. There is something today, if you have not heard yet, it is going to be very exciting, very enjoyable. I yet again am going to give you a trick that I am going to continue to use throughout this class. And it's just like cubic centimeters. If I don't get you now, I'm going to get you later. And these babies are the ones that will really get you. I won't be here Friday, so I can just take it Monday, right? You can. Alright, so in this, trick problem. What volume of nitrogen is in 74.6 times 10 to the 11 milligrams of nitrogen? Why can you not do it? Because it don't say STP. 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 Not at standard temperature pressure. So in this case, can't solve. Not at STP. Or, if I give you values, it'll be the same thing. Okay, so you can't solve this because it's not at STP. But what if we change the problem? And I'll give you a second to write this back down. So what if we change this and said, is in 74.6 times 10 to the 11 milligrams of nitrogen at standard temperature and pressure? You have to do what you know. 
You have to do what you know. That's a good way of saying it. I'm going to openly admit this to you. There is a trick in a trick here. I do this on purpose. Because you're going to catch the first trick, hopefully. And you'll miss the second trick, because the second trick is very, very subtle. Extremely subtle. So subtle. Do what you've done so far. Mark your starting point. Mark your end point. What's my starting point? So I might start to say it. 74.6 times 10 to the 11 milligrams of nitrogen. Now, in this, something should scream to you right now. Hopefully your skin's crawling and there's a red, like alarms are going off, like there's about to be a nuclear meltdown at a nuclear power plant. There's a problem here, and this is the first trick. What is the problem? No, I have for a second. So what is the trick? What's the problem? It can't be in milligrams. Cannot be in milligrams. What's it got to be in? You must get to grams. There you go, Christy. Look at you. Yeah, but I'm confused because I thought we had to get the You do have to get the leaders, but how you can get the leaders is later on. So Christy answered the second part. What is our stopping point? Volume of nitrogen. And what's the units for that? Uh, liters. Liters. So in this, we're trying to get the liters. You caught the first trick. The whole goal of me doing this is literally to set this trick so you'll stop. You'll say, I caught his trick. Well, I'm going to show you something today that you've never seen before. Are you ready to see where your second trick lies? No. So we don't do that? We can't do it? Before? No, you can. But there's a trick within here. It's so subtle You'll miss it later on. It's in the word. Nitrogen spelled wrong. No. <laughs> if something is misspelled on your quiz, that was not a mistake on purpose. That was an accident. Probably going to happen. Word uh, autocorrect may not catch me sometimes. That will not be the problem. This is the thing. Nitrogen is special. And nitrogen has six little cousins. Nitrogen special because when we're talking about nitrogen, like nitrogen in the air that's bonded, talking about N2. Nitrogen is something that we have a special name for within chemistry. We like to call them the diatomics. The N2 is one of the diatomics. So in this, what is a diatomic? Simplistic definition. Nitrogen is one of them, but there's seven all together. It's a cousin of nitrogen. An element. That exists bonded to itself. There are seven of these. I'm going to show you the trick of how to get them. If there's anything I can tell you, these little puppies are your lifesavers. I give you a periodic table for a reason. Every quiz besides the element quiz, which obvious reasons why I'm not giving you the periodic table on the element quiz, you will have one of these. And it's crucial and important. 
because literally so many things in this class can be verified off of this. And there's a trick on here to know your seven diatomics. So, you can get a periodic table out or you can just watch me. At this point, if you're watching the video, close your eyes. Hold that to where it's on the screen. Beautiful job. And this is my periodic table. On here, I'm going to show you how to find your seven diatomics. They make a seven on the periodic table, except for one. I see them. C-N-O-F-C-I-B-R-I-N-A-T. Like, you mean like a seven, like they make a seven? Yeah, like a number seven. You're actually like really, really close. Like, super close. You don't start with carbon. You start with nitrogen. It goes to oxygen, and then to fluorine, and then down from fluorine to chlorine, and then from chlorine to bromine, and then from bromine to iodine, and we stop. So not What one's not on there, though? There is one of these diatomics that is not within that number seven, because there's six that make that number seven if you can't count. Hopefully you can count, or you shouldn't be in this class. Hydrogen. Hydrogen is a diatomic as well. That gives you your seven diatomics, okay? There's the trick of how to find this. If you're watching the video, close your eyes. You may hand me the camera back. Thank you. Berkeley. I'm just kidding. I hate to hear that. All right, in this, I will openly look at you and tell you, because you brought up maybe thing up. <clears throat> you need to watch this video, but you especially need to go back and watch second period video, because I'm solving different problems in the classes. Okay. Now in this, you need to memorize your seven diatomics. So you got N two, O two, F two. CL2, it's a lowercase, not a capital. BR2, and I2, and last is H2. These are your seven diatomics. And you must know them because of what is going to come with them. It is trick central here. Ladies and gentlemen. Do they have to be ordered? No. So on this, looking within this, I'm going to erase this so I got room to solve this problem. This is the trick within the trick. Is that I, the fact that I put a diatomic and I do not have to put the chemical symbol. I can put that name. You should be able to look at your periodic table and know what you're dealing with. So in this, the first trick we noticed and we caught on to, Mr. Hall gave us milligrams and we have to be in grams. So if you need to, write it down and make it simpler for yourself. 74.6 times 10 to the 11th milligrams equals how many grams? If you need to do that, by all means, do it. And then from here, write your number down. 74.6 times 10. I can't stress this enough. I'm not going to spell this out for you now. You have to see that you need to make the change. I'm doing that with a purpose. Because the stuff that we're going into next, you've got to see you have to make the change. If not, it's going to be really bad for us. So in this, we need to find out what something or another is there. So we start with milli. What's milli? Negative three minus zero because we're starting with the. We're going to the base base unit. Thank you. Which equals negative three. Add what you originally start with. Negative three plus eleven gives you eight. Eight. Now from here, do what you've always been used to. Take that number. Or 
we're dealing with grams of nitrogen, so grams of N2. This is why I like to write all this stuff out. I see that N2 and it catches my attention right off. So we're trying to convert, we're trying to get the liters, what we got to do? I'll help you out and say we need a conversion factor. You tell me what the conversion factor is. All I heard was <laughs> liters. I told you, you must either go through them, you're going to them, you're coming from them, you must get to moles. It is number one. So moles of N2 is on top. Number, you already said it goes with it because he is number one. Then on the bottom we have grams of N2. Now, where are we going to get the number for that blank? Um, right there. Right there. Right there. You are going to have to do the calculator thing. You're going to have to calculate the molecular mass. This is why. Off your periodic table, that N, that average atomic mass there, that 14.007 grams per mole, that's for one nitrogen. That's not for two. So in this, you have to solve it like you're doing molecular mass. If this was just normal everyday, single element by itself, no problem. But you have to find the molecular mass of it. So do what we've done before. Nitrogen. How many nitrogens I have? Two times the average atomic mass of nitrogen, which is 14.007 grams per mole. I got that off my periodic table. The number of the average atomic mass below nitrogen, if you look at it, it's 14.007. And I absolutely want to type this in the calculator just because I want to make sure I'm not right. I'm not wrong. Yeah, I'm not right. So in this, you do this calculation, and you should get 28.014 grams per mole. So we plug that number in here, 28.014 Grams per mole. Is that two big two? Here. No. In your equation. Go down. Left. Is that like a big two? It's just like a, a normal number two. My handwriting's horrible. All right, from here, grams of N2 cancel out, leaves us with moles of N2. Now, from here, ladies and gentlemen, what are we going to do? We're in moles. So I need to go down. So I'll need a conversion factor. By the way, because this question was asked in second period, I want to make sure that you also hear it. You are not going to be able to use the mole map on the quiz. Can we memorize it yeah, you can memorize it. I give you a periodic table. If you want to, you can dump it on the back of it. I don't care. So we got a conversion factor, but what's the conversion factor going to be? On top or bottom? So liters of N2. What goes on the bottom? Mole of N2. One goes with moles because he's number one. Well, what goes with liters? 22.4. So, moles of N2 cancel. And now I'm done. I'm left with liters of N2. I'm done. I just need to punch in my calculator now. So, in this, make sure you're punching things in here properly. How do you get 
It's a box. It's the uh, it's the constant. So we take everything like seventy four point six times to ten to the eighth times twenty eight point. You times all that together, right? No. If you're multiplying, you better make sure to put the fraction as it sits. But this is the way that I look at it. I always look and say, I'm starting with my top number. So I type that number in, 74.6 E8 in parentheses. Then I look over here. Is this number in the top or the bottom? Bottom. Bottom. So it's on opposite sides. So I say I have to divide it. 28.014 in parentheses. So now I go over here. And still in terms of this first number, is this top or bottom? Top. Top, so it's the same thing. Numerator, numerator, do I multiply or divide? Divide. divide. They're on the same side? <coughs> multiply. Multiply. So, can you tell us what your calculator says? Like? Yeah, I absolutely can. Uh, I'm going to have to write it out there because this is a big number. About what? So can you add to the steps to that? And that's what I get. Okay. Let's do this. Is that the right answer? Like yeah. Okay. Alright, so let's do this. Yep. What happened with the 74.6 and the 28.04? How about it? I'm going to show you both ways to do this in your calculator because a lot of y'all are like freaking out. You don't know whether to multiply or divide. If you like to, you can you can turn it. Okay. If you're watching the video, close your eyes. I don't know if that's showing up well or not. Is it on there good? Yeah. Can you see it good or not? Yeah. Okay. Now open your eyes. Alright. Alright, so in this, on your calculator, okay, I'm going to show you literally how I'm doing this. You have two options of things that you can do. First option you can do is what I like to do. So I start with my number, and I'm a parentheses free, so I always put my quantities in parentheses. Parentheses. Then from there, I type my number in. So 74.6, and this is times 10 to the 8. Please make sure you are listening here. Second function, comma, gives you the E. So many people are wanting to put the times 10 E. It's just E. E takes place at times 10. Are there any I questions? Times 10 to the 8, like exactly how it is. I don't like to do it that way. You can still do it and get the right answer, but the calculator can read something wrong, and you end up up being on the wrong spot. If you want to go that way, go that way. If that's what you're comfortable with, but don't try and mix the two together. You don't have to. I recommend it. So then you type the exponent. So that is 74.6 times 10 to the eight. That's how the calculator is reading that. Now in parentheses. Then from here, my number is in the numerator. This is why we always set it over 1. I look in terms off that. The second number I come to, is it in the, my factor, is it in the, the number in the numerator or denominator? The denominator. so it's in the opposite side, so I divide. Parentheses. Put the number in. 28.014 in parentheses. Then my next number, the 22.4, is it in the numerator or denominator? Numerator. Numerator, so same size, so we're going to multiply 
22.4. In parentheses, get in. That's what I get. There's a second way you can do this if you feel more comfortable with doing this. But you have to type it in right to where the calculator is going to read it right. This is method two. If you can understand the first method, I recommend going with the first method. If you want to go with method two, go with method two. So this is what I'm saying. You need to use parentheses on this, I guarantee it. Parentheses, type your number in. So I'm going to do a second parentheses because I have this number in scientific notation. I don't want my calculator to read it, read it wrong. 74.6, second E to the A, in parentheses. I'm typing that whole quantity in. So divide by one, in parentheses. The parentheses there says that's one whole factor. It's one whole term. So then from here, you can just say you're multiplying. Multiply, but you have to type these factors in properly. Type this whole factor in. It's one divided by 28.014 in parentheses. Like I said, one divided by 28.014. In parentheses, times, type the whole factor in, parentheses, 22.4, divided by 1. Why don't you want to do that much work, though, when the first one's easier? Because everybody's struggling. I think the first one's easier, but everybody keeps getting struggling, and they're like, wait, how do I know whether to multiply or divide? I feel like that's a good way to check yourself, though. Yeah. So if it's you can. So you like the bottom. If it's on top, it's multiplying. If it's on top, you multiply. If it's on the bottom, you divide. That's it. That's all you're looking at. This is in the bottom. So we multiply or divide. Divide. This is in the top. Multiply or divide. That's it. That's literally it. You're looking at nothing else. Because every time we start with our number in the top and set it over one, that's why we do that. All right? Question. So what do we do whenever we get that answer? Is that it? Write the answer out, put units with it, because the units matter, and then circle it. So that's the answer? That's it. Oh. You're in liters, aren't you? Isn't that what I asked for? Yep. You're done. If you are watching the video, close your eyes. <laughs> Sorry. You put it back now. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta get right on. Okay. Let's watch the video up here. Alright, so, so any questions on this problem here? We do another one. You are doing another one right there. We can't. Ah. Is it on STP? Moles and molecules. Do you need anything about STP? Oh. No, I'm not asking you for a volume. I'm not asking you anything about the volume of the gas. That was the trick. On your mole map, I put, when you're dealing with volumes, no, must be at STP. Only when it dealt with either going to volume of a gas or going from the volume of a gas. So if it's anywhere about volume and it don't have STP, you can't work Cannot solve it, not at STP. But moles don't matter. Moles don't matter, molecules don't matter, grams don't matter. Just Mass don't matter. I'll just say it that way. Because remember, I can start you off in any unit. You have to get the grams. Alright, so in this, you want to give this a shot or you want me to work it? Alright, give it a shot. I'm going to give you some time. Like, hey Siri, set a timer for four minutes. Your timer is set for four minutes. You don't have to. If you need a periodic table, pull it out. I gave you plenty of them. I can't keep my periodic table zoomed in like that. 
guys, I'm telling you, you better make sure you can punch these in properly. Is that CO2? That is CO2. It is carbon dioxide. Please take your time, but feel a little bit of pressure. Pressure good. I will openly tell you if this helps you or not. I will openly tell you this will be your most favorite problem when I'm taking you from moles to molecules or from molecules to moles. It's the easiest calculation. So you don't have to do all that. Are you angry? You got a mass? Where are you starting? Okay, so start there. Where are you going to? Question. So what? Well, they tell the So they're not that That is a mold. Sorry. Or whichever one it is that does the no, I'm going to give it a shot. You need to treat this as if you were literally sitting there getting ready to take the quiz. I'd give it a F. Well, I'm looking at all my stuff. Do we have to use that one special one for this? And on my prefix stuff, there's no more than four. Without that. I mean, I'm going to tell you this, you don't even need to worry about carbon dioxide. It's just part of your unit. That's it. It's that simple. Like, I'll show you how simple this is. Y'all are going to be like, what? Yeah, my brain's not. Where are you starting at, guys? Your number. Number, but molecules of CO2. Molecules. So where are you at on the road map? Left, middle, bottom, right. You're on the right. Where are we trying to go? Moles. Moles. So we're trying to go left. Look at the arrow that takes you from right to left. Hopefully you got some numbers with it. Nope. <laughs> I don't know. This is definitely a fun class. I don't think I'm going to go better than second class. I'm not saying you're better than second. I'm just saying that this is, this is fun. Y'all just like crack. Y'all just throw out those jokes. Hope you got numbers that. Nope. Sure don't. What do you I have to walk. Can we get a little bit of 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 a no. All right, here we go. We're starting with molecules. Your starting point, write the number down. 8 times 10 is 24 molecules of CO2. This is why this is the easiest one. Set it over 1 and set a conversion factor. This is why this will be your favorite, hands down. What goes on top in the conversion factor? Moles of CO2. What number goes with it? One. He is number one. What goes on the bottom? 6.022 times 10 Okay, you gave me the number. That's cool. That's a good job. Hopefully you're memorizing that number. Have God for the numbers. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. What units go with it? Uh, molecules. molecules of carbon 
monoxide, CO2. Molecules of CO2 cancel, leaves me with moles. Do I need any more conversion factors? No. No, you're set right there. Handy dandy calculator to do all the math for you. And you will get 45.7788 moles of CO2. So, <laughs> is it about like the multiplying and dividing is that all you do with on top or bottom? That's it. Okay. I'll start on the top. Then I multiply or divide by this number? Divide. 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 Why did I divide? Because if you multiply it over, it would be... That's fine, too. Okay, so... Okay. Okay. Let's you Okay. What you do with moles, molecules, you pretty much take the equation from the top and just put it on there. You don't have to do anything to it, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.